Hi guys, it's Sarah from Yorkie Splash and Shine. Uh, today we're going to be doing our first video recipe. And it's one of Catherine's all-time favorite recipes. It's a liver and goat cheese recipe. So come on over and I'll show you the ingredients we're working with. These are the ingredients that we're going to need for our recipe today. We have beef liver, some unflavored goat cheese, brown rice flour, uh, some large eggs, rolled oats, and some flaxseed meal. And then today we're using this Bake It Fun nonstick silicone baking mat um, to help keep our treats from being stuck to the pan. So let's get to the recipe. Okay, so our first step is to liquefy the beef liver. The easiest way to do that is in a blender. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is open up this beef liver and put it into the blender here. Beef livers are very fun to deal with once they're all thawed out, nice and gooey. So just open the side a little and then just dump it in. And then we have our beef liver in the blender. Throw that away. And the next thing we're going to do is add an egg. So we're going to crack one of our eggs here, dump it inside, and then we're going to blend it up. I will spare you the blending. Okay, so after a little while in the blender, this is what our liver looks like, nice and liquefied. So now we're going to use this as the base for our treats. So we're going to pour it in a bowl. And there may still be a little bit of chunkiness to the liver, but that's okay. Alright, so here is our bowl of liver goodness. Next thing we're going to want to do is add the goat cheese. I have a four ounce package of goat cheese here. So we're going to open it up and crumble it up inside our liver mixture. The goat cheese is a real uh, creamy cheese. So if you want to, you can also blend that with the uh, liver and go ahead and make it that way. Wash my hands here. Okay. So what we're going to do is just get this mixed up. kind of like a cream cheese. Okay. And I probably should have just gone ahead for the purposes of television and done it in the blender too. But we'll get that all nice and mixed up and then the next thing we're going to do is add the oats. Okay, so what I have measured out here is one cup of rolled oats, one and a half cups of brown rice flour, and a tablespoon of flaxseed meal. So we've got over here just the liver, egg, and goat milk or goat cheese, and we're gonna add our oats. And our flaxseed meal. Get that all mixed in. And then we're gonna add our brown rice flour. And it's going to be kind of a weird concrete type consistency. Um, these types of treats with the liver, um, they're really delicious, but they are not the kind of treats that you can uh, make little pretty cute dog bones out of. They do not work that way. I've made some liver treats with dog bones, but you have to add so much flour that the taste of the liver is gone. Apparently, I haven't tried them, but the dogs don't like them as much. So, the more liver, the better, which means the less, uh, you know, solid they're going to be as you're working with it. So, here we have our dough, if you will. It's kind of like a pasty, wet concrete. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to spread this out into our pan and today I am using a silicone baking mat for the first time usually I just olive oil coat the pan pretty well but um, 
we were given the opportunity to try out this baking mat so I am super duper excited what we're gonna do is if you have just a regular cookie sheet um, wipe it with some coconut oil or use a, an olive oil cooking spray and kind of spray around the bottoms and the edges um, this treat tends to kind of pull away from the edges as it cooks um, so you want to make sure it releases really easily but we are using this mat so we're not going to spray it and I am just going to dump our dough onto the tray and then we're going to spread it out over the tray as evenly as possible so that it cooks evenly and then when we're all done with this we're going to pop it in the oven all right so we've got our oven set at 350 and our timer on for 20 minutes and we're going to come back and see how our treats look okay so our treats are done they are out of the oven they look like this uh, what I have done they are still hot is gone around the outside edges with a knife uh, just to make sure that they are uh, easily detached from the side and then what I'm going to do is just real gently cut them in half uh, and then transfer them to a wire rack so that they can cool uh, so I'm just going to real gently cut the whole sheet in half I just don't want to damage the baking mat under there so just real easy and this will just make it easier to get it out of the pan. Okay, so now I have a giant sheet of treats here. And we're going to move them so they can cool over here. And then we're going to wait 15 minutes or so. And when they're nice and cool, um, we will cut them apart. Look at how easy that came off. Pretty awesome. Our treats have cooled off quite a bit, so now what we're going to do is cut them into appropriate sized pieces and um, place them in a container for storage. So the way I usually do it is just cut them into strips, something appropriate for your dog. If you've got a bigger dog, bigger pieces, smaller dog, smaller pieces. Um, so cut them into strips and then just cut them into smaller pieces. Should be pretty easy to do. These treats kind of have a consistency of a thin brownie, slightly crisp brownie, depending on how long you allow them to cook. And here's what the pieces look like. You can see the oats. All right, and then put them into a container to store them. Store them covered in the fridge. Uh, they should last about a week or so. Um, if you want to, you can freeze them. What I am using is called Pupperware. They're super awesome. And you can go to our blog to get the link to get some of these for yourself. Thanks a lot for watching our recipe. I hope you guys enjoy it.